Hello, and welcome to our Ventura TV. I'm MB Hanrahan, and today my guest is Nick Deitch. He is an architect and a self-described troublemaker. And I, I say that with conditions and that I think you're one of those kind of people that is not necessarily satisfied with always with the way things are going and can see a better way. So we'll, we'll frame it like that. So Nick, I'm bringing you in today to kind of talk about your, um, specifically your work over the years of designing buildings for Ventura uh, Housing Authority. And by that, we mean, I want to say subsidized housing. Why don't you take it from there and you can describe mm -hmm. what you and your company do? Well, thank you. And this is this is a joy to be here with you, uh, MB. I appreciate it very much. Um, I think uh, building housing in Ventura in particular, you know, over the last 30 years has been challenging. The community is guarded, uh, doesn't want to grow fast. And that's understandable. We all love it here and we want to, you know, we're protective of the, the, the town that we know and love. But the reality is that the town has been growing and continues to grow. And I think our average growth rate, you know, in the last 30 years has been 1% per year, which doesn't sound like very much. But if you're a population of 100,000 people, that's 1,000 people per year. And in 10 years, that's 10,000 people. So when you, when you start to look at the growth in that kind of context, okay. Um, now, a great deal of that growth is coming from within the community, babies, you know. Um, okay. But certainly people move here, and they move here because it's a lovely place and it's a nice place. And so uh, one of the ways to get people to not move here is to have it be not such a lovely place. I, I, I don't think we want that alternative. <laughs> <laughs> so the challenge is, because it isn't such a nice place, housing is expensive. Hmm. And it's, you know, been going up steadily um, at a rate faster than inflation for many years. And yet at the same time, you know, we have families here who have, many who've been born here, raised here, who work here, who are not in high paying executive jobs, who need to be housed. And that includes the, the full spectrum from farm workers to service workers to even, even teachers and public yes. employees, lots of people who, who struggle to, to afford to be here. And yet um, who serve our, who are so vital to in serving our community. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, affordable housing, creating affordable housing has become very important. And as you're aware, I'm sure this is not just a Ventura issue. This is a California issue yes. and especially a California coastal issue, but not just a coastal issue. This is really happening all across the state uh, because it's a great place to live. And that's one of the prices we pay. It's a great place to live. So we got to figure out how to house the people we need to be a, be healthy communities. Well, the housing authority is a, is a, really interesting organization and i'm not a master in the, the the governmental and legalistic formations of the housing authority but it's basically a public agency it is not a part of the city it's in conjunction with the city the the board members of the housing authority are appointed by the city council and that's kind of where the relationship ends in terms of direct accountability right. the director of the housing authority reports to the board of the housing authority not to the city council um, the Housing Authority's mission is to create, maintain, operate affordable housing in the city of Ventura. And I will tell you, I think they're, they're doing an amazing job. You cannot drive around this, the city and pick out the projects that are the Housing Authority projects. Or if you can, it's only because they're so well-maintained. Um, so, yeah, I've had the, the real pleasure of, of partnering with uh, the Housing Authority on uh, several um, affordable housing projects. And uh, the results have been really, you know, I think quite impactful on the community. As you know, we're, we're in the uh, third stage of the reconstruction of the 1950s public housing project known as Westview Village. And that project was, was built, it was the first, as I'm understanding it, the first public housing project in the city of Ventura and probably in the county of Ventura. Wow. Um, and it was, it was built out of a particular need, which we won't get into at this moment unless you want to, but ultimately it became a, a staple of, of affordable housing for West Side, for the West Side community. And 60 years later, the buildings were in you know, poor shape. It's, it was starting to fall apart. And the, the housing authority, actually 50 years 
because it took about 10 years to do it, they started thinking about how to reconstruct that place and what they would do differently. And it really has been a transformation. And we went from, uh, I think, about 180 units to 300 and something units. We almost doubled the number of dwellings wow. and added park space and added a community center and turned it into something that feels like a, a pretty contemporary neighborhood. Mm. Um, so that's been really exciting to see that happen. It has a combination of family housing, individual housing, senior housing. It's got the whole gamut. Um, I and, remember, uh, well, let me yeah. just interject something sure. because we've been doing this um, series, for want of a better word, on the unhoused. And I remember going to one of the groundbreaking events in relationship to what you're talking about. And a mm -hmm. woman got up who was formerly unhoused. And I'm sure mm -hmm. you must be aware that that housing authority also reaches out or in some way accommodates that um, that population. Is there anything different yeah. that, that in, in taking into mind when you're an architect such as yourself designing for these type spaces yeah. or is that yeah. just I'm throwing it you back know, to you? The, the, on, yeah, honestly, the beauty of it is, and I work, you know, this is not true only of the housing authority, but you know, we work for other nonprofit housing builders like right. People Self Help Housing, Many Mansions, Habitat for Humanity. The wonderful thing about this, and I work for a lot of private, you know, for profit developers, and there's a lot of good developers, good people out, out there trying to do good work. But these particular projects are not profit driven. Hmm. They are, they, we really get a lot of leeway to, uh, explore and and brainstorm with the clients about mm. how to build better neighborhoods, better communities. And so if anything, you know, we're really looking at what what is it about these projects that makes them not feel like projects, that they, they feel like pieces of neighborhoods, you know, and that that they're filling a puzzle piece that if it if it's done and finished, it feels like the place is more complete. That's always our goal with every mm. project. Thank you. But um, I'm thinking particularly of um, a project called Castillo del Sol, which is on Main Street at uh, Center, I believe it is. It's near the mall, um, just past the Five Points Car Wash. There's a project there. It has a, a metal sun up on the corner of the building. That's Castillo del Sol. And that project was designed specifically for a special needs population and, ah. and the previously houseless uh, population. And so that project is designed to be essentially pretty much 100% accessible throughout the building. There's an elevator, there's a, um, a community facility on the ground floor that is for gathering and for social spaces, but also has office spaces for the service workers come in to support these people who need some you know, ongoing support and care. And uh, it's a really special project. That project would not be built by a for-profit builder. It's a you know, it's, it's a project that was specifically designed not to make a profit, but to serve a special need within our community. And I, I think that's amazing. That's awesome to be able yeah. to be a part of. That's an yeah. excellent example of what, of kind of my question throwing out to yeah. you. So it's, it's pretty obvious that um, these kind of orientation and building makes a difference in our community because so often that's exactly what you hear people argue. There's like, you know, people being unhomed, unhoused. It's a, it's a direct effect of not having affordable housing. Yes. It, it's funny because I've, I've heard people say, essentially, why would we build housing for people who can't afford to live here? <laughs> oh, gosh. And my response is, you know, who's going to serve your lunch when you sit down in a restaurant? Thank you. Who, who's going to check your gas meter and, you know, teach your kids, uh, you know, I mean, this, it's such a spectrum of people who struggle to afford the, the cost of living in a community like this. Um, one of the really cool things that's happening right now, that you may be aware that, that the uh, state of California in the last few years has passed legislation that has mandated that, that cities like Ventura all across mm -hmm. the state must accommodate the housing need that is attributed to, to our community population. And there's wow. formulas for figuring that out. And I'm not an expert in any of that, but basically what, you know, what it comes down to for Ventura is over the next 10 years, we're about 5,000 housing units down. Mm. 
-hmm. Now that's not houses. That's anything from a, a single room occupancy um, apartment to a two or three bedroom apartment and everything in between. But we're shy by about 5,000 dwellings. And that's one of the reasons why the, the cost of rent for everybody is so high is because mm. the limited supply means that the price goes up. That's right. You know, so the city just recently passed uh, an ordinance about inclusionary housing. And what that means is that even a market rate for profit builder needs to provide a percentage of affordable housing in their project. It's called inclusionary mm -hmm. housing. And um, that in combination with the state's mandate is coming is is resulting in a very powerful factor of our ability to provide affordable housing because suddenly what the state is saying is if you provide 15 percent very low income housing in your project you get a 50 percent density bonus mr developer mm. or mrs developer mm. um, the state the, the the city passed a law saying you need to provide 15 percent affordable housing so they're they're being told they have to provide it but they're also being given a mechanism by which to afford to provide it Right, an incentive. And here's, mm -hmm. and, and here's the beautiful thing. Working on projects right now in downtown Ventura that have the 15% inclusionary housing. And these projects have, for instance, a roof terrace with ocean views of the mm -hmm. coast. Someone who works at one of the you know more um, successful businesses downtown, maybe an executive, might live in that uh, complex and 15% of those units are also being rented at a very low income level, meaning that the person who served them lunch might be drinking a glass of wine with them on the roof terrace when the sun is going down. Mm. That is astounding to me. Traditionally, we built, you know, the products for the poor people were over here and the products for the middle income people were over here and then the wealthy people are over here. In these mixed use projects, we're getting the whole spectrum of community. I think that's just incredible. Wow. Well, I can't believe that we have already burned through our time. Nick. We'll have to do it again. <laughs> yeah, agreed. And thank you so much for your for providing this the information and insights. Yeah. Keep, up, keep up the good work. My pleasure. Thank you, MB. You too. <laughs> and thank you, our audience, for joining us. This has been MB Hanrahan with our Ventura TV. And I'll see you next time.